A couple weeks ago, I made a video that people in Germany do not shower every day. And after I made that video, many of the comments were like, yes, of course, we don't shower every day. It's not good for your body. And I was completely confused. I thought the comments were going to be the complete opposite. Now, it's my job to fit in with German society. So I did what any logical person would have done. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to shower for about two days. So I went on a little dinner the other day and the guy was like, I had a really good time on our date. Really, it was very good. Oh, I'm so happy. Thanks, you know. What? I have to tell you something. You smelled like a horse from my grandpa's farm when I was eight years old. The smell was really nostalgic, but it was very, very strong. I don't know what that smell was, but it really put... Y'all lied to me. Y'all lied to me. Listen, if you don't shower every day, hey, props to you, bro. But over here, I gotta do it every day. But y'all lied to me. Y'all sent me... Ah. Why do so many white people get on podcasts, get on TikTok, and talk about how their children don't bathe or how they don't bathe? I feel like there's something to discuss here about whiteness and how it is viewed as clean and pure and better and primary and default. And really, the history goes to show that white people have always been disgusting. Indigenous people, African people, they were bathing, and they they many of them noted that the first like sign of Europeans was their stench, that they were just putrid. And I do think a lot of the reason why people of color in America America are so clean, smell so good, have to have their hair done, have to have their makeup done is because of upward mobility, because the standard for them is so much higher than it is for white people. Like white women can just walk into Target with a messy bun and sweatpants and, and it's like, oh, look at her. Like she could be a multimillionaire. Her, her, her husband could be an entrepreneur. Yet a black woman can, is not afforded that same luxury. So I really feel like white women are just rubbing it in, rubbing that level of privilege in when they go on podcasts or come on TikTok and talk about how their kids don't bathe. Like that is disgusting. I'm sorry. I grew up taking a bath every single night. My parents brushed my hair every single night, brushed my hair every single morning. Um, it wasn't that big of a deal. When I got older, I was given deodorant and face wash and that like, I have actually been showering twice a day, often, like, especially in the summer morning and night showers, especially if I'm pregnant. Sometimes I would shower three times a day, like wash yourself, wash yourself. My sons do not go to bed unless they're clean. I don't want their dirty bodies in their bed. And then every time they get into bed, it's dirty from the day. That's just my own opinion. But I do think that the larger discussion here about whiteness and why people, why white people love to bring it up, love to talk about it. It's like they know somewhere that they are given the power to not have to bathe their kids and still be given so many privileges. Okay, so I've seen a lot of videos recently about people of color reacting to white people who don't wash their hands. Stay with me. And I'm here to tell you why. It is literally all because the Puritans thought it was a sin to take a bath. And so they would never wash. It actually got so bad that the natives could smell them coming there. No joke. And this has just been passed down through shit like white supremacy. That's it. It literally comes full circle. Everything comes back to white supremacy. White people do not wash their hands because of white supremacy. So my fellow white people, wash your hands. Fight white supremacy. The white women on social media who don't bathe their kids are at it again. This is a bit of an ironic statement coming from a brand that formulates kids' body wash and personal care products, but this is what we truly believe in. Rinse off their sweat with water, scrub them only when they're visibly dirty, use a gentle body wash on hands, feet, and bottoms as needed, and leave the, I can't read that, as much as possible. The more we wash, the harder the skin has to work to rebuild its defenses. Like, shut up. Uh, and this often starts a cycle of skin issues and overuse of product. The less we intervene, the more our skin is able to build, maintain, and repair its barrier properties. Less is always more when it comes to kids' skin. And then she, it goes on to talk about Ashton and Mila. And, the, and of course, the comments were full of white women talking about how they don't bathe their kids. They only clean them if they're visibly dirty. And a bunch of people of color being like, bro, this is disgusting. I think... Teaching hygiene to children is really important because it's not natural instinct. They're not going to want to clean themselves. They're not going to want to take a bath, right? Uh, you need to teach them the care and keeping of their own bodies. Also, living in the world 
is disgusting. You are dirty. You do want to be clean when you get into your bed at night. And most important at all of all, this is a privilege for white, thin women to do with their children. It is not something that people of color ever get to experience or they can have their children literally taken away from them for neglect. So let's look at this through many lenses. I don't say we avoid bathing, but we bathe very rarely. Oh my God, I'm so happy oh, that you're awesome. talking about this. Yeah. She okay. didn't have a bath for like five months of her life. Yeah, like we didn't bathe her for the first whole part of her childhood. And like now we basically bathe her if she asks for it because it's fun or she's really exceptionally dirty. dirty. We really wanted to keep her skin microbiome as healthy and intact. Even if it's just rinsing with water, our water has chlorine in it and, and all kinds of other preservatives and different chemicals that I just didn't want to expose her to. This show and being married to my wife has opened me up to so many more thought processes like this because I think so many of us are conditioned, but if you really strip it down and think about it, obviously we lived this way naturally for a very long time. I think like, you, you know, you put up the commercial city constraints and people change their behaviors. So it's like coming back to a more primal way of life. Now that you guys are saying this, I, that makes a lot of sense to just like let it be. And I feel like as a mother too, you have intuition to know when they need a bath. I don't say we avoid bathing, but we bathe very rarely. <laughs> Their house smells like Fermunda cheese. Do they not realize that babies sweat? Like, you, you gotta clean them. What the fuck? Some people, number one, should not be allowed to have children. Him and his wife are two of those, for example. Some people, number two, should not be allowed to have a podcast or be on a platform like that. Those two, perfect example of that. What the fuck? Clean your child. Maybe not every day because they're not running around doing that shit because they're a baby, but at least every couple of days, clean your fucking baby. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Y'all are fucking gross! Ew. You're nasty. This should be shown to like CPS and be like, hey, take their fucking kids away. Now! This commenter did a beautiful job of summarizing why white people, why American white people do not bathe their kids very often. And it goes all the way back to Europe. Um, obviously, people didn't have baths as much. People believed that being dirty kept germs away. There was just a lot of historical cultural norms against bathing, whereas indigenous folks and black people in Africa were very in touch with the water, like ritualistically. Um, there's just there's equally as much historical uh, cultural information about the relationship between indigenous peoples and the natural resources like water. So then during slavery, white families were having the black enslaved people washing their kids. And then after slavery, um, white women still didn't really know how to take care of their kids. So they hired help and the help would still bathe their kids for them. And then finally, once white women were completely on their own, stay at home moms in the 50s, 60s and 70s, they started to cut corners because they were like, oh my God, this is really hard work. Um, I'm not going to bathe my kids every day. And also too, like the, the racist um, thread in this is that white people believe they're inherently clean. They're inherently, they inherently smell good. They don't need to wash every day because they're so clean and beautiful. And, um, I have seen this firsthand. Like so many white people are like, Oh, I just don't need to wash my hair every day. I only need to wash my hair every three or four days. Like it's a flex. You do need to wash your hair. Your hair is disgusting and greasy. I grew up, my parents were always telling me like, Oh, you don't need to wash your hair every day. Like every three or four days, like just getting all the slack. I was like, my hair is gross. Like there it, it's, I get grease in my hair every day. I, I wash my hair every single day. If you have anything like depositing on your body, wash it off every day. Your beauty and or inherent value as a human being does not go like it doesn't make up for the fact that you're filthy. Old video. But how many times have we seen white guys that walk into the bathroom, pee, and then walk out without washing it? When you say something to them, they're like, "Ugh, I'm better. I don't have to wash my hands. I'm inherently clean. It's so funny. I was actually just talking about this with a coworker, and my unpopular opinion is that's probably the one of the main reasons why black women as slaves were getting, you know, R worded by white men because we knew how to bathe. And it's just literally a proven fact. <laughs> Like you guys said, like this woman said, like, it's just a proven fact that the 
the white population just stink and just was nasty. You know what I'm saying? So, do better, white people. Do y'all remember secrets? Pepperidge Farms remembers. You couldn't torture this information out of me. I bathe every day. I've come across videos where people don't wash their legs. I've come across videos where there are some people who don't wash in between their butt cheeks to clean their ass. Just straight skid marking it 24-7. I've come across videos of people saying that they don't use any kind of utensil when cleaning to clean the dirt off their skin, whether that is a washcloth, a loofah, um, the African net sponge, or something to scrub the dirt off of them. They just use their hands and a bar of soap. That is not getting yourself clean. That is effectively just rubbing soap over the dirt and then washing it off. The same way that you wash the dirt off your goddamn car is the same way you need to be doing it to your skin. That shit is disgusting. And if you ain't the one who's doing this shit, I don't want to hear you on my comment section. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking specifically to the ones who choose to not bathe. Like, dead ass saying that, oh, like, I wash everything except my legs. Wash your goddamn legs. Your legs get dirty, too. I don't understand why y'all think they don't. And before anybody says, well, the soap just runs down the legs and it's not cleaning shit, scrub your goddamn legs. That's thighs, shins, ankles, feet, in between your toes, underneath your feet. I will never understand coming on the internet and revealing these kinds of secrets to people. But then again, I'm also glad because I know which ones to stay the fuck away from. Just like the people out here making uh, food content, basically just ruining groceries with the price of how uh, fucking groceries uh, today and they out here just wasting food when there are people starving who can't afford shit. That shit pisses me off too, but that's another fucking topic for another day. Back on to this whole not bathing shit. It's fucking disgusting. If you disagree... Argue with your therapist, because I don't give a damn. Hope everybody enjoys the rest of their day. I'm going back to watch an Attack on Titan. White teacher was asking for stereotypes, and I said white people don't bath. Hey! <laughs> and then she sent me to the Brazil. Hey! But let us, let's be honest, because honesty is a great policy it is. to have. The clips that I've seen on social media of uh, people that don't bath are usually white people. I rarely see black people saying I don't bath. It's just a thing. We bath again. Mm -hmm. I don't know about this three times a week business. So that lady may, in that yeah, time. Yeah, three times a week. That's a thing. It, no, it, it is a it's thing. It's understandable. Do you get me? So Big up all the white people that bath every day. Because no, shout out Uno. Shout out Uno. <laughs> but yeah, not bathing every day is wild. Like I understand when you have a little lazy day. Yeah. You, you ain't been working or you're at home. Fine, you're in your own space. But the minute you go into public space. You need to You bath. need to be considerate well, of other people's you noses. Know what, you know what... Re you honestly i love the white people in this so yeah. don't be offended but back in school yeah what used to really make me feel uncomfortable talk to me because if it's the same thing as me i'll vomit now yeah. you know where white people eat pasta yeah? oh, you <laughs> see it there. oh i hated it yes, uh, and you see the white you see the, no, the red pasta I hated it. it actually to this day it proper makes me feel sick is that the same one yes because I, I was about to say you see this here yeah and then you're talking to me i'm like just go, just do this, or lick. When they have the dry sides, or the ones with the pasta? No, pasta hair. No, pasta. Because it used to be ravioli when I was in school, yeah? Oh. But but also, what I hate is spit hair. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That can make me, like, genuinely vomit. Like, I vomit, feel yeah. sick. Like, even think about it now. I could, <laughs> I could, I could, I could, I could <laughs> on this table right now, I could just... You could out. just release. So I had to come do a story time, because... This is such a real thing. Like, people really don't bathe their kids. Like, outside of, like, us seeing an influx of, like, sickness when we enter our children into childcare situations and into school. Because literally, like, my daughter was not sick all summer, right? And she's usually prone to, like, ear infections or whatever. As soon as she went back to school, she got sick and then we all got COVID. So she was out for the first week of school already outside of that again i said she's prone to ear infections right so she's had two like she's had surgery twice to put tubes in her ears to help with drainage the last surgery that she had 
the early in the morning, me and her dad dropped her, not dropped her off. We took her and to the, you know, clinic and to have the surgery. And they took her back and, you know, did the surgery. It's so quick. So she was out in like 10 minutes or whatever. And she's coming back. Well, they came back and was like, she's still waking up. But I just have to tell you, she smells so good. And I'm like, what do you put on her? And I'm like, nothing. <laughs> she was like, you have no idea. She is the best smelling child we have really ever smelled. And I was like, what do kids usually smell like? And they was like, you have no idea. I, I don't understand how you get her to smell so good. I literally only bathe my child. And I use all sensitive skin products. So there's no added you know what I'm saying? Like fragrances and you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Like I've moved now that she's six, I've moved to using things like, you know, shea oil, shea butters and, you know, coconut oils and stuff like that, but still no heavily like scented products on her skin. And I'm still using Dove baby on her. Like it is a very rare occasion. I mean, I use Dove myself like body wash. But like it's a very rare occasion that I'm going to use any other body washes on her because I don't want her to be, uh, she's so sensitive. She's six. I'm sensitive. I'm 36. I can't use certain things on my body, you know what I'm saying? And especially in my female areas. So for her, damn right, I'm still using sensitive baby products on her, like for real, everything. And even like with bath bombs, like she likes to play with bath bombs. I get her the kid friendly bath bombs like everything kid friendly very low you know what i'm saying dyes scents all that stuff i i just but i keep her clean and even if i don't bathe her every day you best believe she getting wiped the fuck down with soap and water like we have a cup that i literally fill every morning with soap and water and we wipe her entire body down and we apply a lotion or oil or some Vaseline or something on her skin and on her body. Like, what is wrong with y'all? These poor babies. But you know what? It's so also uh, crazy because when I have, I look at the attire that people put on their kids. Now, I know people will be struggling or whatever. I get it. I totally get it. You got to do what you got to do for you and your family. But I don't spend no money on real crazy money on my baby clothes. I don't. I get a lot of her wardrobe from Shein, okay? Period. Because it's ex it's inexpensive. The stuff just lasts. The quality is just there. It is. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how we rock out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not spending mad money on stuff where she's about to grow out of in three months. Like, two, three months. Like, and, and she into something different the next, you know what I'm saying, season. Like, no. Like, <laughs> We're not spending a bunch of money. But I see people and the way that their kids are dressed, the clothes are too small, ill-fitting in, in every way. It's I don't get what's going on out here, bro. Like, outside of the just the bathing, that's, that's please, just wash your kids up. It, 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 wipe them down. It's okay. And throw them in the tub. They love it. I set her tablet up. Uh, uh, while she's in the tub and she can listen to music. She can watch her, her YouTube videos. She has her little toy drawer. They love it. You don't even got to do nothing crazy. Just throw them in the tub. Just throw them in the tub. It's, it's simple. And they out your hair. I, she, she sat and she was sitting in the tub for an hour. Fingers wrinkly and everything. And, and I can do whatever I want to do. And and if I'm not ready for her to get out, you want some warm water? You know what to do. Turn the warm water on. Get some more water. It's cool. Chill out. I'm cleaning up. I'm making dinner. Have fun in your bath. You want some more toys? Get it. Have fun. You at the beach. She want to take a bath in her swimsuit. By all means. Now, you know you got to take it off to wash. But you want to wear your bathing suit in the, in the, in the tub? Put it on. But the baby is getting in the tub. 
Watch your kids. It's indicative of you. It really is. We are diving into a very hot topic today. Do white people really not bathe daily? Like from the videos I'm watching today, it seems that these people actually don't bathe daily. They don't. And where did this stereotype even come from? Mm -hmm. Social media? Of course, social media. You heard that, right? <laughs> Over the years, people have been joking about celebrities of which I don't want to mention their names, admitting that they don't bath their kids daily or themselves regularly unless they see that. This drew up from there and suddenly it became a very hot topic. But is there any truth to this? Mm -hmm. Or is it just one big generalization? Let me know. Because from these kind of videos, I'm just coming to realize that these white people actually they don't bathe daily. Majority of them, not all of them. Please, I'm sorry for the generalization. And uh, I know bathing habits vary significantly across cultures. Like for instance, in many Western countries, a daily showers weren't a widespread practice until the last century. You know some. Uh, parts of Europe, especially during winter, is always very cold and bathing less frequently was practical. People were scared of uh, the cold from winter and they used that excuse not to bath daily. But these homes, I guess, have conditioners. Why don't they just bath daily and uh, after work, they stay indoors so that you keep that good hygiene oh my goodness i know some dermatologists actually debate whether showering every day is good for you or not uh, because uh, they say overwashing can strip your skin of natural oils leading to dryness or irritation because you know these white people most uh, they don't have a uh, melanin on their skin unlike black people we have melanin and we are proud of our body so uh, let's talk about the social norms of this because in the u.s for instance daily bathing is often tied to the idea of being clean or presentable it's cultural expectation but in other parts of the world especially mm, in europe a quick rinse or even washing specific parts of the body daily can suffice so does this mean one group is cleaner than the other does does it I think not necessarily because hygiene is about what works for your body and for the environment. Now, assume an entire group of people doesn't bath daily is obviously oversimplified and inaccurate. Just like any community, individuals have their own routines. You get it? Influenced by personal preferences, upbringing, and even lifestyle. And yes, some people might skip a day or two, but trust me, that's not exclusive to white folks. You guys, you need to bath your kids daily. You know, some of the kids, if you don't bath them, they cannot sleep well at night. And it's you who will be waking up at night all the time taking care of the kid. Because maybe the kid is sweating and feeling very bad. Oh my god. You need to bath your kids. So, bathing habits ain't one size fits all kind of all uh-huh they're shaped by culture by climate history and even by personal choice because some people might consider not bathing <laughs> instead of focusing on stereotypes let's embrace the differences and maybe even learn from each other i'd love to hear your thoughts how often do you always shower and what influences your routine of showering drop your comments below because i want to know are you like uh, other white people who don't shower daily i'm not saying that black people shower daily some black people also don't shower daily i don't know why but they have melanin body which doesn't dry up that much i know winter can affect the black skin melanin but need to shower daily you guys my guys oh my god so guys drop your thoughts in the comment section do you always shower daily 
and what motivates you to shower daily let me know so kindly remember to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe if you haven't and by the way thank you for always supporting my previous video and any kind of video i upload until next time is a good boy for now see you in my next video